From Must Be Nice, this is Day by Day, the new series of stories inspired by our new normal. Today's episode comes from friend of Must Be Nice, Joanna Block, and stars Josephine Langford, Rian Barreto, Tanner Zagarino, and Kim Bonifay. We want to hear what you've been going through these last few months. Text us at our brand new phone number, 646-783-1043. And without further ado, this is at the peak of it all. A new day. A brand new glorious day, I think. Days have simply morphed and distorted into unknown spans of time where everything is so still, yet time keeps moving. Fast, somehow. Well, it is all an illusion. Like, time keeps moving, nothing is quite happening, and the day is over before I know it, and I don't even know what I did with my day. Unclear what day it is, what I should be doing with my day. All I know is it's a morning, a new morning. I sit curled up on my fire escape on good old 108th Street in New York City, East Harlem to be more specific. I sip my coffee, trying to settle my mind that has gone on complete tangents, as it's been basically the whole time in quarantine, racing and racing and racing. As I wiggle my toes on the beams of the fire escape, still crisp from the night before, I see a stranger walking below me on the sidewalk. She's all geared up and walks briskly as if on a freaking mission. I follow her steps until she gets to the corner and turns. I wonder though where she's going. I haven't spoken to anyone in person in about two months. Well, except a small encounter at the bodega to get a rare sighting of Clorox wipes I found and an avocado. An avocado at a bodega, who knew? That was my one minuscule conversation I had with someone. I may have even held up the avocado in complete shock. And it was right, too. Anyways, I am the only one here in a three bedroom apartment. Everyone else went home, whatever home means to them. I just know I didn't feel comfortable enough to go home. Who knows who I was exposed to since New York City became the hotspot for COVID-19, but also so much unknown. I can't really dwell too much on it, honestly. I spiral into a hole that is a challenging one to escape from. My mind already goes into a bottomless void where feelings and emotions blend together, becoming a blur as I plunge down deeper and deeper with zero escape routes. Then I talk to myself about wild concepts like human existence and the sprouting of corona and the philosophical reasoning behind it. Some theories run fucking deep. Like, how long has it been in the States before we started testing? Yeah, I try to figure that out. Now that I am on the topic of corona, I think more about corona and whether I had it or not. Like, how could I have not had it? I mean, I travel all the time and on the subway touching the nasty poles and do I even wash my hands as often as I would like to admit? Oh, man, and there it is. I feel the tickle in my throat. I knew I didn't have it and I should have been more careful. Lucy, why on earth are you not using all this time to your advantage? You are a writer. You should be writing all day long. Now the tickle's gone. I'm going fucking bananas. Oh, here it goes. Emerging from the depths of my brain trying to haunt me. The long list of new career paths. (sighs) That being said, I try not to dwell on things too long. The city has never been this still and quiet, or at least I've never took the time to truly listen before. Color is just starting to emerge in Central Park, the view from my fire escape. I don't think I ever took the time to witness the transition from season to season. I was always too busy with life stuff to notice the subtle transformation from winter to spring. It's kind of magical. It is beautiful to think about the time it actually takes for mother nature to regrow and bloom. Usually I just remember it all of a sudden being warm and wondering how I got so sweaty out of nowhere. Throwing my layers off and looking up to see the trees magically green. Like, oh, when did that happen? Now I'm forced to observe the process of growth and just being. Here and now, when I let myself sit and be, I'm actually calm. 
this is gonna be forever. No, 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 no. Not the way we're going to view this day, Lucy, not the way. Not now, not today. We are not gonna go down that rabbit hole. <sighs> I look around my street. I absolutely love my neighborhood. It kind of rules. As much as being a 25 year old in East Harlem has its adventures, truly nothing beats the music blasting from different windows. There's always something going on, even during a pandemic and time of social distancing. In its own way, my neighborhood keeps the vibe lively, upbeat, hopeful. Oh, and of course, the one guy blasting salsa from his car and dancing around the sidewalk. How fun. I stare at him just a bit longer, soaking in his positive energy. The music reminds me of my mom, how I miss her and really want to go home. She always dances to salsa in the house. I'm not sure exactly if she knows what she's doing, but I gotta say, she always goes in. She doesn't care if it's right, as long as she lets out all of her built up energy in her body where only the feeling of joy is left. Somehow this allowed her to do that. Man, I wish I was with her. The calmness from the music lasts for about a minute and a sudden sense of urgency pulses through my veins. <laughs> my chest tightens. What on earth am I going to do with my day? I pick up my phone, open up Instagram and tap on stories, stopping on a story of people clapping and cheering at 7 p.m. Yep, honestly, the best part of the day. Tapping on the next story of a fellow colleague of mine. Hey guys. So I know I've been talking a lot about how this is the time to go inward. Well, now it is week six and I can't stress this enough. Take this time to do the thing you have been hoping to accomplish or projects you have been telling yourself you did not have the time to do. That screenplay, working on self-love, that book you have been trying to write. The tightening of my chest intensifies. I don't even think I can take a deep breath in. There are so many things I feel I should be doing. Ideas on a new fictional story I wanna write, half-finished book I'm currently writing. Maybe I'll write a science fiction novel, that would be fun. I did think of an interesting story for a screenplay. Am I even qualified to write a screenplay? What about a play? Or that business plan you never got around to fully fleshing out. This is the time to embrace it all. I'm telling you, embrace this pause and finally be productive and do all the things. I shot Instagram so fast. That was exactly the place I thought I would be in. I thought I would be doing a lot more with my time. All this time. Yet, I am trying to find the willingness to finish projects I already started. I'm coming up with ideas in my head, but not doing the action of putting pen to paper or feeling inspired to write at all. Everyone else seems to be doing it. Everyone seems to be adapting to this new normal and I'm behind. I can't find the willingness to keep up. Jeez, I can't even finish any of the five books I've started reading. I crawl back inside my window to release this feeling of having to do something that's trapped inside me, but nothing changes. It's still there, being productive. What does that even mean? How does one do anything right now? All I really want to do right now is lay around and do nothing. Wow, I'm protesting against myself. Is this self-sabotage or is this my mind telling me something? Wow, anxiety is fucking real right now. The pounding of my chest continues to build. I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing. Maybe I need to pick up a new creative hobby like watercoloring or cooking or dancing. I do like to dance. Oh. Lucy, you're just adding more stuff to the long list of things to do where you haven't done a single thing yet. I walk over to a blank page I left open from earlier. I sit down and stare. I stare down at the endless open blank white vortex. I slide into the white page as it swirls down, down through the notebook, through the table, my kitchen floor, down into the apartments below me and the one below that swirling and swirling down further into the floorboards of the building, then breaking through the Earth's crust. It keeps going further and further, slowly falling, the white pages spiraling slowly through the Earth's mantle. There's a ringing as it breaks through hard surfaces until it cracks through into the core. The core. The light reflecting up through the void to me and me looking down at its radiant hypnosis. Oh, 
It takes a moment to acknowledge my phone ringing. I stare at it and pick up. Hello? Hello there. Oh, man, I'm so glad you called. <laughs> Saving me over here. <laughs> you just, like, came to my mind and I thought I would check in. It has been a minute. Yeah, I know. We were really doing so well with our daily check-ins. <laughs> <laughs> So, how have you been? Oh, I actually have been doing quite well, weirdly. You know, just figuring out what works, what doesn't. What about you? Um, I've been okay. Having trouble staying focused. My brain sort of feels like mush. Mm. Yeah, I, I was like that at the beginning and then something sort of just like clicked. Now I'm getting so much work done. I, di I didn't even have the time to do before calling And then I came up with a whole new idea just before calling you. A whole new one. I mean, I finally have the space to just do it. That's great. I just, you know, can't wait to tell you more about it. Mm-hmm. Which I'm... Uh, sorry, I'm currently in the zone. And I might have to sh just, like, pop off shortly. But I just still wanted to call you to connect and, you know, try to do our daily check-ins again. Yeah. Yeah, of course. No, 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 go right. You're in the zone. Uh, are you sure everything's okay or...? Yeah. Um, we'll talk tomorrow. Okay, yeah. Well, you know, happy writing. What the f... What just happened? It's like the universe knew that would be the exact phone call to make me feel even more defeated. How? I look around my apartment feeling more trapped than ever before. Everything is closing in on me. I need to get the fuck out now. I run to my jacket, throw on my shoes, put on my protective gear, mask, gloves, you name it, and run the fuck out of my apartment. I walk down my street like Speedy Gonzalez. I look like a fucking Looney Tune taking longer and slower strides. I slowly release whatever worked up energy I had previously. I don't even know how I get to that place so fast where I'm just completely suffocated in a small space with this idea that I need to be doing. The act of doing. A concept that I can't really seem to wrap my head around or my mind and body are defiant to the idea of having to do during a time of pause. I don't know what I'm fighting or what I'm trying to prove, but I'm tired. I look up. The trees are swaying ever so slowly. The sun is covered by a big white cloud dispersing the sunlight evenly. Some pockets of light shine through the baby buds on the trees. Some are even blooming. I smile to myself and close my eyes. The stillness I feel. I can feel the cloud unveil the sun as the hot sun rays pour onto my face. I have this moment. I get this moment. I am one with this moment. The heat already calms me down. It's like my brain doesn't have the room to overthink. I calmly walk back to my apartment. I walk up my three flights of stairs, kick off my shoes, strip all layers off of me, wash my hands, and find myself laying on the couch. The combination of the sun the stairs and working myself up has got me completely wiped out. Slowly, I feel myself melting into the couch. The thought gently crosses my mind, will I ever be able to lift my arms again? This relaxation lasts for about roughly 30 seconds. My heart rate creeps up. Lucy, why are you just sitting on the couch doing nothing? If not writing, you should be doing at least something creative. Stella said she came up with a new idea and finally has the space to do it. See? People are accomplishing things as you just sit on the couch like a bum doing nothing. Stella, out of all people, the girl who chooses social gatherings over doing the work is using this time wisely. Damn it, I was doing so good. 
I take my laptop and I scroll. I scroll through virtual yoga classes, virtual sound baths, virtual dance parties, newly published cookbooks. I can feel my heart racing through my veins. Why don't I do something practical and join the wellness circle? The uncomfortable pounding sensation of my anxiety mixed with fucking frustration. Why can't I get myself to fucking focus? Everyone else seems to be focused. I get up and I start pacing to avoid what seems to be heading into a direction of a panic attack. I am trying to calm myself down, but all I want to do is have a fucking meltdown. Why do I even call myself a writer when all I do is the opposite? Am I scared? Am I lazy? Maybe my dad was right, that I should have gone down the more traditional route. Maybe I should find a new career, something easy. What's easy? What is easy? What the fuck is easy? I'm telling you, Lucy, wellness is the way to go. Well, fuck that! I am letting everyone down. I close my eyes. Breathe in, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Breathe out, two, three, four. I did this a couple times until the pounding softened just a hair. I truly don't know how, but an hour passes, fluctuating in and out of weird states until minutes before I have a FaceTime date with one of my best friends, Peter. Still, I cannot believe I have not done anything today. Hi. Hey. <laughs> I miss you, Lucy. Man, I miss you too. Okay, how are you? I mean, how are you doing today? Um, I'm good. Well, today was interesting. I didn't really do much. The usual. Although I did go to the park, but um, that's about it. That sounds pretty nice to me. Uh, I mean, I didn't do anything productive today, so I don't know how great that is. Everyone seems to have found like an alternative or some kind of motivation and I'm just putting a lot of pressure on myself to get things done. Well, didn't you say you always wanted the time to just work on yourself? Yeah, but, but it's just a whole bunch of anger rising to the surface. A lot of frustration with myself. It's really unpleasant to sit with. Anger can be good to unpack. So, how is your day? It's good. Busy. Very busy. Work is still wild, although I'm getting distracted mixing my place of home and my place of work, and I need to find a distinct area of my apartment that is just for work. Maybe I can actually use my roommate's room. Hmm. Is this triggering you? No. <laughs> okay, let's get cracking. I'm starving. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, so... It says we mince half an onion. Mince away. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So, how's your mom holding up? Um, good. She keeps going out for walks and grocery shopping, which, which gets me worried. That is pretty valid. Yeah, like in the back of my head, I'm anxious about her and her health. It's just hard not to be in control. And how are you doing, Lucy? I don't know. Honestly, I, I don't know. I, f I feel like all I know how to say is I don't know. <laughs> I've been putting a lot of pressure on myself to get stuff done or to keep up with everyone. I'm comparing where I am currently with everyone as if I should be at their level or more. I don't know if that makes sense, but I feel stuck. And then I'm angry that I'm stuck. And then anxiety kicks in, which is just a continuous cycle. And I just feel, I need to give myself a break. I don't allow myself to feel and just be. I feel that is where I want to be actually, behind all of the pressure, just being, not doing. 
Wow, that was a lot. I don't think you're alone in that. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I miss people a lot. I miss touch. I miss routine. And I'm just fucking angry. to witness. I forget how much screaming into anything just feels so good. How are you feeling now? First off, I feel the fucking power emerging out from the screen. Second, I definitely need to throw these onions in the pan. Third, I feel I am a little closer to acceptance. Accepting that this time is to just be and feel. For me, at least. Exactly, and Lucy, you know I'm always here. I mean, if you need to cry, or scream, or tell a stupid dumb joke, I'm here. I mean that. This was it. This was the key piece I was missing. How I am actually feeling and knowing it probably won't be the same as anyone else. And that's okay. It always passes. I can be vulnerable because we are all going through this together. No one has it figured out. And if they do, cool. I have to take care of myself and embrace whatever feelings arise and I won't die from feeling them. I know that sounds dramatic, but I forget that in the moment. Peter and I finish cooking and eat the concoction we created. We talk for another hour, babbling about complete nonsense. We then say goodbye. I hang up and I'm alone once again. But it's a different feeling this time around. I turn to look at my empty abyss of my apartment. It's a little less daunting than before. I also feel really accomplished. Even if I usually associate the feeling of accomplishment with something else. It's different, calming, and a pretty cool feeling. I crawl onto my couch, lay, and allow myself to truly sink into my couch. For the first time, I feel a sense of ease wash over, soaking in this new sense of freedom. This is where I'm meant to be. This is what I'm meant to be doing. In this moment, sitting in my own skin, and that is completely okay. It's Josephine Langford. This month is Mental Health Awareness Month and almost everyone right now is struggling with some form of anxiety. I know that social distancing might make you feel lonely, but the good news is you're not alone. Crisis Text Line has partnered with a handful of other amazing organisations to create the Mental Health Fund in order to meet the increased demand for their free 24-7 crisis counselling. You can help them reach their goal of $5 million by visiting www.thementalhealthfund.org or if you yourself could use someone to talk to, you can text HOME to 741741. Thank you for listening and stay safe.
This episode was produced by myself, Adam Faze, and Jamie Dolan, with sound mixing and design by Beckett Cerny and an original score by Callum Watson and Jackson Lewis. Special thanks to Lena Rocklin, Christ Hanover for our incredibly special animation, and Layla Gorgoni for our beautiful artwork. Stay tuned next week for two all-new episodes of Day by Day. Until then, stay safe.